All right. So Matt, Michael came home the other day and he said, I just learned that Albert Einstein was actually a real person. I said, really? And he goes, yeah, I, I, this whole time I thought he was just a theoretical physicist. <laughs> good. good evening everybody and welcome to the graveyard thank you for joining us tonight my name is adam and my name's matt now pull up a tombstone or settle into your casket and get comfortable because this is is Graveyard Tales. <laughs> All right, everybody, here we are again. Matt, how you doing tonight, brother? Man, I am great. I'm I'm really excited about tonight's show. I know, I know, I am too. So let's get through housekeeping real quick, and then we can talk about what we got coming up. We want to say go check out the Podbelly Network at podbelly.com. You can find a list of shows that we're happy to be associated with, and you can find some tips and tricks on podcasting if you're interested in that. Also, thank you to tonight's sponsor, Fume, and we will talk more about them coming up. While you're on the internet looking up our sponsors and our podbelly.com website and all that stuff, Go over to patreon.com slash graveyard tales and sign up to become a patron. We've got three different levels, one, five, and ten dollar. And we've got some changes coming up to our Patreon levels here in the next week or so, next few days to a week when this drops. Um, within a few days, you should be getting the first episode of our new Patreon only show that will go up for our ten dollar. Uh, $10 a month patrons, and it's going to be totally different than anything we do here on Graveyard Tales. No following any set train of thought, no nothing. It's a conversation show, and it's a way for y'all to get kind of a look into mine and Matt's personal lives and for us to be able to talk about things that we think is cool, funny, whatever, that we don't get to talk about on Graveyard Tales. Yes, and ridiculousness ensues. Yep. So yeah, we, uh, we, we, we crack on each other. We talk about different stuff. It, talk it, about our past. Fly, you know, a lot of it flies off the cuff. We're going to be having some special guests come in, um, you know, just to chat with them. Uh, so check it out. I, you, I think you're really, really going to enjoy it. Yep. And our... Uh, one and five dollar levels they get bonus episodes every week which are you know random different topics they're a little bit shorter a um, little bit less edited than the main episodes and we're going to start putting the ad free audio versions out for our five dollar patrons as well as our ten dollar patrons so we got some changes coming up to our uh, patreon levels but get in there and check it out at patreon.com slash graveyard tales. All right, Matt. So that is all the housekeeping I got. So why don't you tell us what are we talking about tonight, brother? Okay. So tonight, uh, we have two special guests, uh, coming on to talk about their newest project. Um, we're, we're going to be talking to Derek Hayes, who is the award winning host of the podcast monsters among us. Uh, he's also, um, appeared on travel channels, paranormal caught on camera. Okay. David Flora is an actor and host of the podcast blurry photos. And Adam and I have been fans of these shows for years. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, if you have not checked out those podcasts, please do. But Derek and David, uh, became friends through the, the podcast industry and found a shared interest in uh, a place known as the Borrego Triangle. And if you're if you're familiar with uh, some of that and not all of it, um, Ansa Borrego Desert State Park in California um, has some extraordinarily weird things going on, and. Um, and David and Derek have uh, have gone and and filmed a documentary 
called Shadows in the Desert, High Strangeness in the Borrego Triangle. And uh, they were gracious enough to let Adam and I have a, a sneak preview. Um, it's it's fantastic. I mean, it, you know, it, it covers topics that Adam and I really were not familiar with at all. Um, and, you know, everything from, from UFOs to cryptids, uh, Bigfoot sightings, an eight foot tall skeleton. I mean, there is mm-hmm. just so much that Derek and David dig into. Um, but enough, enough of me talking about them. Let's bring them in and hear it uh, straight from them. I'm excited. All right, everybody. So here we are with Derek and David. And uh, Derek, we've known each other for a while now. Um, David, it's good to meet you finally. Listen to your show, but never got to actually talk to you personally. So it's pretty cool. Thank you guys for coming on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you a lot for having us. It's we good, appreciate good it. Good to meet you guys too, because uh, yeah, you guys have been around a while now, and um, I remember when you were uh, first starting out and everything. And yeah, we never have uh, uh, gotten our boats to to cross <laughs> in the night. No, no, that's true. I because yeah, you know that ev- old saying. <laughs> ever since we started, um, I've known about blurry photos, but we've just never talked. And I I mm-hmm. I don't remember how Derek and I started talking, but. I couldn't tell you either, but no. it's been five, six years at this yeah. point that yep. we've been chatting yep. back and forth. Yep, exactly. I just Maybe figured it's because I was from Kentucky. Y'all well. were like, <laughs> nope, nope. That, that might be a little something to do with it, but <laughs> no. <laughs> Kentucky's about as far north as we like to go, so you're still safe. But <laughs> Try it. I'm right there. Yep, right on the border. Are you? Yeah, but... but 40 minutes from my driveway. I'm in Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Corbin or what? What's that? Uh, yeah. Is it Corbin? No, where I live. Yeah. Uh, I live in Gallatin, oh, okay. uh, which is, which is North just it's straight North from Nashville. Pretty much. That's where people go when they get confused on the, uh, the map and trying to get to, you know, Gatlinburg. Mm hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, if you show up here because you were hunting for Gallenberg, you are way lost <laughs> and sorely disappointed too. <laughs> but I'll take your money. They're like, yeah, I'll give you a tour. Yeah, I'll show yeah. you around. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, so we all seem to be in kind of the the same realm here, but I've never asked Derek, and definitely haven't asked you, David, since we haven't talked. But what got y'all into? researching the paranormal and interested in the paranormal in general. Well, I'll tackle that first, I guess. Uh, For me, it was a personal experience. I actually saw an ABC, an alien big cat, alien black cat, whichever you want to say, uh, when I was a kid growing up in Ohio. Oh, wow. We were down in the woods messing around. We heard a pop in the brush on the opposite side of the holler there, and something just come tearing. You got my accent coming out. <laughs> <laughs> something just came running through, uh, you know, running through the brush there. And we we kind of got glimpses of it, and it looked feline. It looked huge. had a long, sleek black tail. And, uh, you know, that got me going. I, I started reading books about Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster, UFOs and ghosts, and it just kind of steamrolled from there. Yeah, and for me, I just always enjoyed mythology. Um, going through middle school and high school, read the mythology books and the scary stories to tell in the dark, things like that. And yeah, um, didn't really get into it until I got to um, Chicago and I was working a a job where I could listen to podcasts, you know, watch episodes of things, and just you know, I was like, wow, l- listen to this weird stuff. Is this actually happening? And then I started like wanting to look into it, research it and figure out what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's kind of similar. I think both Matt and I had uh, personal experiences that led us into the um, listening to the, the unexplained and stuff like that. I think what was it, Leonard Nimoy mm-hmm. was the first one doing in it. In search and, of. In yeah. search of. Yep. That's it. And those kind of things. And then when he and I met, it kind of exploded from there and then you've got this. So, um, 
<laughs> He's but, talking about me, not Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, Matt. I've never met never met Leonard Nimoy. Uh, uh, yeah, it was funny because we we were friends and we hadn't really ever talked about this stuff. And I guess what a few years went by before we ever. I think we. I think you were up here at Halloween and. Amanda started ribbing me about telling my all of my ghost stories, and that's that kind of when it when it went because I you know I I I've, I've had experiences since I was a kid, since I was about ten or eleven, so and it's it's just kind of followed me, you know. Yeah, I, we we have we have stuff that happens at this house. This is about the fourth house I've lived in since I moved out, and still, it's still stuff still happens. It so happens out point, here. It's, it's you, Matt. It's it's not the houses. Right. It's you. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's chasing me. I realize that. So I just, you know, I just be respectful. That's why embrace I embrace it and make rolling. a show out of it, right? Yeah, yep. Exactly. That's why I had to move so far away from Matt. I, he kept bringing it over to my house. And I was like, dude, I'm moving back to Texas. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if only anybody knew how many times that we cut out me going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep. I heard, I heard, you know, something coming up the stairs or something opening the door. Like, oh, that happened man. last week. He, yeah, it happened last week. Yeah. He uh, <laughs> stopped and he's like, "Hang on," and he looks down there because he's on like a loft in a building, and so there's a door downstairs. He swore the door opened and closed. He thought it was Amanda coming in, and so we had a whole like five minute break of trying to figure out what the hell was that noise that Matt just yeah. heard. Yeah, Amanda wasn't even here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You do a whole episode just on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so the reason y'all are on today is because y'all have a new project that's coming out about the Anza Borrego Triangle. And well, just just the Borrego Triangle. Just if, the Borrego gonna, Triangle. Yeah, if no we're going to throw the term out there, we'll, we'll nail it down. But yeah, the, the Borrego Triangle out here. So in looking at that, that is fascinating but what made y'all decide to head in that direction for it Derek well the original idea yeah yeah i think so uh essentially it, it breaks down to this we were camping out there uh, okay. a few different times and we would hear all these legends as we were out there i'd look a few of them up beforehand and Derek we talked to the odd not, person not, yeah, not david and i <laughs> leonard nimoy and myself yeah. were out there. <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah, I met I met my wife, not David. Uh, so anyway, we're out there camping, and I, I just couldn't find any information on it. And I kind of just got the gears rolling, and uh, I was thinking, man, somebody ought to do something on this. There's all these legends out here, and there's just no media covering it. So then David and I got to talking, and, and I got the bright idea. I'm like, well, I don't have make David do most of the hard work on this project, and <laughs> I can just sit back and relax. So I talked him into it, and uh, the rest is history. There you go. So – what all actually is reported out there that you can get into? Well, just about everything. And that's one of the reasons why we uh, decided to do a film about it is you have old West ghost stories. You have uh cryptid sightings, Sasquatch Dogman. You have uh, orbs that are uh, seen flying across the road out in the middle of the desert, flying off of mountains you have UFO reports. People see strange-looking craft and objects, and then military presence after that. Um, and there is a big military presence out there as well. So um, it just seemed like a lot of stuff in a very concentrated area, mm-hmm. and we wanted to uh, draw some attention to it, tell the stories, and yeah, that's where we ended up. A very weird area too. Uh, Super. Just weird. looking at the place, it looks like another planet. Yeah. Yep. From yeah, I, I noticed pictures, I noticed crazy. how unique it, it looked as compared to hey, we're out in the desert. This looks a little bit different from what you typically think of when you're out in the desert. You know, it, it didn't look like anywhere else I've ever seen. Um but you know, the whole idea that it's another one of these mysterious triangles. And yeah. and they, y'all mentioned how many different different types of activity happen there and it's similar in other triangles it's just such a conglomeration of all, all that's paranormal it's like a who's who you yeah, know all yeah, in these much. triangles and it was odd to me i had never heard 
anything about this one un- until, you know, you know, we, st- we started looking into y'all stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it seems like we did our, do- our job then, David. <laughs> we we kind of <laughs> yeah. co- coined the phrase Borrego Triangle. It, it was kind of funny the way it happened. We just started plotting things on the map. And before you know it, it kind of made that shape of the triangle. And David and I kind of just looked at each other like, of course, you know, it's going to be a triangle. It's yeah. It's got to be. <laughs> yep. It's not going to be the circle or the decahedron <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah. You know? The Borrego well, then, hexagon. Yeah. So, yeah. and I, and I didn't realize that that was really y'all's term. Um, and that, that wasn't a term that you guys came across that kind of led you into it. Um, yeah. that's, that's, that's really interesting that you guys picked up on that, but it, it fits with all the other ones that, you know, we've talked about. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it does. It, it certainly does. It evokes that, that mood too. You know, when you think of Bermuda Triangle, Bridgewater Triangle, mm-hmm. uh, Alaska Triangle, it, it gives you a sense of what you're talking about immediately. And the only difference with this one is I'm not, I don't know exactly the, the size of the others and everything, but this one's like the size of Rhode Island. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. It, it's definitely bigger than the Bridgewater because we looked into the Bridgewater and like you're saying, similar to Bridgewater, it's got a little bit of everything, ghost, mm-hmm. UFOs, Bigfoot. And I, I wonder if. It can't be a a coincidence to me. There's so many points like this, Bridgewater, like you said, Alaska, Bermuda, that it seems like they they maybe hub areas where, you know, it, it kind of all emanates from there and spreads out because yeah. you've got one there that's close to y'all and that and the Borrego State Park area. And then you got one on the other side of the U.S., Bridgewater. Then you got one up in Alaska. It's almost like Lake, Lake Michigan. Yeah, yeah it's I like mean, you've got pinpointed mm-hmm. areas and the activity spreads out across the U.S. from those areas. And that's kind of what I was feeling as we were going through y'all's stuff is it seems like it's uh, m- maybe the generation point for a lot of things. Hmm. Cause if you've got Bigfoot activity, cryptid bipedal hominids out there, there's a lot of that reported on the West coast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So could it be coming from there and moving out? Mm. Well, yeah, there is a lot of activity out. Oh, sorry. There is a lot of activity outside the triangle, too. You know, it was really hard for us to keep everything confined, you know, just outside. Um, There were several cases that were like, can we move the triangle line a little (laughs) bit just to encompass this one story? But we decided, you know, against it. So you might be onto something, you know, maybe this is the epicenter and stuff is just sort of leaking out from there. Right. Yeah. I mean, it could. I said it's the size of Rhode Island. It would probably be the size of Missouri if we included everything that <laughs> came out from ever, from there. But that's an interesting uh, way to look at it, Adam, is that, you know, the term that we keep coming back to is window area, um, that, you know, could things be coming through here from mm-hmm. something else? I don't know. Right, but yeah. um yeah, if it, if it does, it, yeah, maybe it could spread to other places and these are generation points or, you know, however you want to look at it, but it's fun to to think about. Yeah. Yeah, gives a whole new meaning to the term paranormal state, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but and and continuing on that, um cuz Adam, you you make an interesting point. The the other places that we've mentioned, one of the common things that we hear is how that place feels. So, mm-hmm. and you guys started to touch on it, but you know, it, it looks different. How, what kind of things did you just feel when you got there to know we're in the right place? Well, the first thing I notice out there is just how exposed that you, that you feel, you know, everything's wide open and uh, there's no hiding essentially. And it just has that strange uh, atmosphere about it. It's really hard to put into words, but the people out there, are, you know, they're, they're all kind, nice people, but they also keep to themselves. You know, they don't, they're not super outgoing. You don't, you don't get a lot of people waving at you and, and stopping by to see what you're doing, yeah. that kind of thing. So it just feels like there's a lot of secrets out there. 
Uh, you know, David, I'm sure you can piggyback on a lot of these emotions that are picked up on out there. Oh yeah. It's, it's a place for people to get away, you mm-hmm. know, and mm-hmm. the people who are out there don't want to be part of a bigger community really. Right. Um, for the, for the most part, um, it's very, though it's wide open and desolate, you kind of feel like you're being watched all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of that's wild. True. Yeah. It, it makes me think of when you say that, they- they're friendly, but they're not going to like invite you in or just start sharing things with mm. you. It reminds me of, and David, you probably will know this, places in Kentucky and the Appalachians, when you go to areas there where they're, I mean, you've heard stories leak out about weirdness in that area. And you go there and the people are nice and they may have experienced a hundred things just this past year, but they're not going to open up and tell you about it. It's for yeah, them. Keep you at arm's distance. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And it, did, it, that's did what I got. Did y'all get any pushback from some of the people you tried to include in the documentary? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> like, uh, yep, we did. Short answer, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there were there were people that you'd ask about a certain topic and they just clam up. They're like, yeah, I don't yeah, want to okay. talk about that. Um, and then there were people who said they would talk to us and then just ghosted us Yeah, yeah. and, and, or said, I'm not going to talk to you anymore out of the blue and wouldn't give an explanation. So, you know, Mm. it could be small town politics and stuff like that in some instances, but it was, uh, a a fair number of times that we encountered someone basically dropping out of, you know, what we were trying to do with them. It would be full cooperation and then suddenly gone. And this mm. happened a dozen times, I would say, something like wow. that. It seems like it could be one of those things, you know, I think we've all said it, where if you talk about the paranormal or you look into the paranormal, it's going to ramp up around you. And mm. maybe just by them saying, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you about my experiences. Maybe some stuff happened that scared them enough where they were like, eh, I, I need to back off. So this will back down. Like, you know, a lot of native American, uh, legends about skinwalkers. You don't talk about it. You know, they're there, no. but you don't talk about it because that will invite them in. So I don't know, maybe they had all, all good intentions in talking to y'all. And then, when that started, something ramped up around them yeah. and scared them. Oh, there's you know, a lot. The other thought we had. Oh, sorry, Matt. Oh, no, ahead. I was just going to say there's a lot to be said for opening and opening up old wounds or old fears. Um, especially if, if these people live there all, all their lives, they may have had an experience as a child. And, you know, when you start digging up those memories and, you know, you're basically just telling a couple of strangers. Yeah. Um, and a that, camera. That can be hard. Yeah. And a camera yeah. too. Yeah. You don't even, don't even think about that, but, um, but yeah, I mean that, that, that could be really, really difficult for folks. I, and you know, that's something I didn't even, I wouldn't have even considered, you know, I figured everybody would be like, yeah, come on to our town and we'll talk about this. And it's, <laughs> we thought the same thing, honestly, <laughs> but you know, once we got boots on the ground, it was an, a completely different scenario. Yeah. That probably adds to the the creepy feeling out there too, when you get ghosted oh, yeah. like that. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> I think, I feel like I'm remembering something about that when, um, dude was writing the book about Mothman and oh, John Keel, John Keel. Yeah. He kept getting ghosted by people that he was supposed to interview or they would, you know, show up to meet him. And then all of a sudden act scared and say they couldn't and left Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it it just reminded me of that when you said that they were you know ghosting you or or decided oh no i'm not going to talk i'm not going to talk about it it's just it 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 seems like a pattern when you start investigating larger paranormal events 
No, it's funny you bring up John Keel in Point Pleasant because I, I feel like he thought a lot of that was due to the Men in Black, mm -hmm. that the Men in Black would actually get to these witnesses before he would. And David and I have joked a number of times about we hadn't seen any Men in Black. We hadn't had any evidence of the Men in Black being out there, but there was tons of military presence everywhere. They were watching us. You know, they were they were aware of what we were doing. So, uh, you know, is it possible that the men in black are getting to these witnesses? You know, I, I don't have any proof of that, but it's it's hard not to speculate. Sure. Well, sure. and and when I when Adam and I got on and we were just kind of setting up and I said, you know, they may not want to talk about it. But I said, what's the deal with all the dead gum helicopters? That's what we want to know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was the thing. I mean, it's yeah, like, it, 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 it looked like it was, I mean, every, well, y'all focus on it, but then when you realize, yeah, if you go back and look through this, you'll see them in the distance. You know, they're yeah. just flying around. It's like, you know, the, is there, is there a military base near there? I mean, I know the place is huge, but at, well, at one end, or is it close enough to one of the more well-known ones out there that that's what they would be doing? Uh, actually, a few of them. Right, Derek. Yeah, there's a there's a few there in the area. Edwards isn't that far away. Okay. Um, yeah. Miramar is out there. 150. Um, yeah, Miramar is pretty close. They're Pen all about Pendleton? 100 150 miles away. Pendleton's out that direction as well. Yeah, near Miramar. Um, so you know, there's certainly just I'm sure exercises that were being run here and there, but there were some that got right over top of us and kind of circled like they were taking a look. And they did a little close. dip to look down at us. Oh, yeah. and, like they were obviously yeah. looking at us. We yeah. were the only thing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And makes you wonder if it's a coincidence that the bases are around that. Because I've always wondered. Oh, I've heard that too. You know, we put we put military bases sometimes in strategic areas, but then you've got other ones that. Why are they there? You yeah. know, like. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones around the Borrego Triangle. What other than just open air, what else would be advantageous about being there? So is there something that they know that's happening there? Because I think they're, um, to not give away too much, but there there is an area that y'all went up to that had activity reported, but you couldn't get there because they had it gated off and it's, now military government property mm -hmm. so it it seems suspicious to me that they would kind of take over a lot of these areas and it doesn't seem like oh we put a base here and then the paranormal weirdness started happening it it's kind of the other way around because from what y'all yeah. uncovered it's been happening for a long time oh yeah yeah and there's another place within the triangle called the Clark Dry Lake Bed, and it's just outside of the the the, the small town, I guess, in the center of the triangle, uh, Brago Springs. And Clark I don't, Dry uh, Lake Bed, in case that cut out for you all. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah, Clark Dry Lake Bed. Um, back in the uh, 30s, is that right, David? The, the military. Spring. Yeah. 38. With yeah. The they Navy. they put a couple runways in there, and they used that as a bombing range. And then in the late 50s, they installed this antenna array that was like two miles long and a mile wide, something like that. And with the help of NASA, the University of Maryland would send radio signals up into space from this location uh -huh. and then receive them back. And I guess they're tracking items through space this way. But uh, nowadays, you know, it's, a, it's abandoned. All this stuff was all pulled out of there years ago. But people are still seeing UFOs coming in and out of that region, out of that dry lake bed. So, uh, yeah, there's there's certainly some military presence outside the bases themselves. I mean, like you mentioned, there was a training center that was just conveniently where all these Bigfoot sightings had taken place. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't get to that location because it was off limits. And then this Clark Dry Lake bed. And, of course, all the choppers in the air. I mean, the, the sky's alive, especially at night when you're out there. Yeah, it, it the you know, the Skinwalker Ranch and stuff like that, they've got a, a heavy black helicopter presence out there mm -hmm. and there's ufo activity that happens there so it just seems like you guys have stumbled on something an area obviously that matt and i hadn't heard about but it seems to mirror a lot of these places that we quote unquote know have mm -hmm. strange things going on and i think y'all have hit on something 
pretty crazy out there. <laughs> well, you know, the deserts hold a lot of mystery. Just, yeah. you yeah. know, natural and sometimes supernatural, apparently. Um, but the, there's there's always that that mystique about the desert. And like David said, especially at night, you know, total yeah. total darkness. But I wanted to ask you guys, because you, you make a point at the beginning to, to, to bring this up almost as a, a PSA, you know, the conditions out there are not favorable. And you know, no. what you, you, you talk about a little bit about what you're, what you're having to deal with, but what was it, you know, what was it like ha- being out there and, and dealing with the heat and the wildlife on, on, on top of, I'm trying to focus and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to get this, get this shot, or I'm trying to discuss this. And you're like, I'm constantly looking around for a scorpion to crawl up my leg. <laughs> <laughs> we did it have an experience like with a scorpion. Weirdly enough. Uh, we, we came back from filming late one night and we just kind of grabbed the stuff out of the vehicles and brought it in. We rented a huge Airbnb that the entire crew stayed in. And, uh, we didn't notice anything. The next morning we come out and there's a, what, it's like a three or four inch scorpion right oh, on yeah. the doorstep. We had to have stepped Big on it and center. killed it. Oh, oh wow. But it, it, it was just sitting right there and we, nobody noticed it the night before. So <laughs> that guy almost got into the house. Uh, but to answer your question, I mean, th- the biggest concern for us was the heat. It was oppressive. Uh, I think it was 122 several days that we were shooting. And I don't <laughs> think it was below 95 any of the days that we shot. And, you know, a lot of this was during the day. Uh, yeah. At night, it was still 95 degrees at mm-hmm. night. So here's the best way to put it. You know, in that Airbnb, it did have an air conditioner. And the lowest setting it would go to was 86 degrees. And it felt like the Arctic. Yes. <laughs> <into that> place. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a buddy that uh, lived in uh, Brownsville, Texas. Mm-hmm. And that's what, you know, his, his AC was set on like 85. I'm like, yeah. what? Why? And he's like, because when it's 110 outside, 85 feels pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like, uh, well, yeah, I guess it, it's all relative. You know, It runs forever to try to yeah. get it to that point. To so 85. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's working <laughs> overtime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and it was... But besides the the heat, I mean, I think we, we actually did a pretty good job uh, of not getting super pissed at each other like <laughs> getting all hot and angry and dude yeah and like when are we going home when's the yep. food Su- ah. surprisingly yeah we you know we did get along we did pretty all well right. considering how hot it was i didn't think of and that we had yeah. uh one camera guy who was lugging around you know at least a 50 pound camera plus a huge tripod uh lenses bags things like that sound guy you know taking stuff and and then a field producer and then us so that was the crew you know, partly to keep costs down and also partly so, you know, less people to die and yeah. us to, yeah. you know, <laughs> get sued. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Matt and I were just talking a week or so ago about these like ghost shows on TV. And we're like, how would you like to be that camera guy? And so it goes for <laughs> y'all's camera guy too. You're, you're lugging that around. You can't really see because you're looking into the camera. And then you're have the hosts are dragging you to all these crappy, weird places. And you're like, I signed up to shoot a video. I didn't sign up to step on rattlesnakes or get, you know, it, it poked by this. Lose 20 pounds of water. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, and there could be a monster out there, too. I mean, you're actually right. looking for an eight uh-huh. foot tall, hairy creature. So, yep. so if that does uh, show up, don't expect me to catch it on camera because I'm going to be running. So. <laughs> Yeah, you know your your cameraman's got to be the have, have the biggest cojones of the group. You know he's gonna yeah, be the one that go. gets it. <laughs> yep. He also wore all black, black jeans, black oh, t-shirt, geez. black hat, and we're like, you're you're too dedicated to the behind the scenes crowd. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> it's hot. Dude. Play, playing the part too well. Yeah. I'm yeah. surprised he made it, but. So Matt, have you ever tried to break a bad habit, but? It feels like you're climbing Everest in flip flops and, and a, a G string, you know, oh, yeah. just uncomfortable and difficult. I mean, I think we've all been there at some point. The good news is that you can try fume. It's not about 
giving up. It's about switching up. Fume takes your habit and simply makes it better, healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable. So you can take the bad out of the bad habit. You know, instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses delicious flavors because it's an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that helps you break those bad habits. Yeah, and you know, it's it's really got that 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 hand feel, you know, that mouth feel that will occupy you enough to take you away from that bad habit. You know, it's got a great weight, Adam, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's so it's clicky. You know, it feels good in the hand, so it takes care of. I gotta fidget with something, right? Um, but then when I when I really need to, you know, take that edge off, I can you know breathe through the fume, and it replaces that bad habit, and you know just cuts the edge off a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I've all I've done is I've taken the bad out of my habit, right? And you know it. it really makes a difference and the flavors are great um you know the the mint and uh the maple pepper yeah i mean they they're really really good and and again you're you're getting that flavored air um you know when you breathe through the fume so it's it's not like you know you're not calling a dog you know you're <laughs> you're getting that flavored air as you breathe through the, the device and you know, it, it it's really cool looking. You know, it, it's got a, you know wood, it's metal, and the new Solano fume is made with a premium walnut barrel and an oh, yeah. onyx coated mouthpiece. So it's got a softer finish. Um, so it's a little bit more tactile and it feels good. You know, when you bring it to your mouth. Plus, fumes just released a magnetic stand for your fume. So there's no more losing it around the house. It's built with fidgeting in mind and you can spin your fume around on it that's cool yeah it is cool so start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com that's t-r-y-f-u-m.com slash tails and getting the journey pack today a fume is giving listeners of graveyard tails 10 percent off when they use our promo code tails that's T A L. ES to make starting the good habit that much easier. That's right. Go to tryfume.com slash tails, T R Y F U M dot com slash tails, and use our promo code tails, T A L E S, and you can get 10% off by getting a journey pack today. If I'd have been it him, it was a fear. We were very concerned that somebody was going to get hurt or, or sure. you know, even worse while we were out there. So we were very careful. And then that's why we put the PSA in the beginning of the film yeah. because we and didn't that's... want people going out there in July taking a two mile hike and then dying because mm-hmm. that's exactly yeah. what people do every July. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. People, I mean, people get lost out there. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. you, 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 ca- you get confused, you get hot, you get a little dehydrated, and then you, you forget how to read a compass. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that stuff happens. A lot of times that doesn't do you any good anyway. I mean, it's just the fact that you've walked three quarter of a mile with no water and now you're dead. That's just how it works in 120 degree heat. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to get lost. (laughs) Yep, that's that's true. That was another thing, you know, we can bring up talking about the distances. We were set up in Borrego Springs, which is right in the middle of the, the triangle. And it took us an hour and a half to get to any spot. Just yeah. dry to drive out there because it's so spread out. There's just nothing, but all these spots, you know, are in different places in right. this configuration. And we, you know, it 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 hurt the shooting schedule because we could only do a couple things a day because you had to drive so far to get to them. So yeah, that the distance is a killer as well. And I mean, what was the other option? You know, you're gonna camp out there no in that kind of in those kind of conditions. Just so green you can get a couple more yeah. hours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah green <laughs> screen. Guy, everything. Yeah, just send yes. the camera guy out there and then y'all stand in the AC in front of a green yeah. screen. That's, That's right. how we're going to do the sequel, I think. We're just going to green <laughs> screen it. Just, narr- just narrate it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yep. 
Yeah, I, I mean, we, picture or something. we sent a yeah. drone up. For, I mean, we had several drone shots in there. We sent one up, and it came right back down. Like, it quit. It was like, th- I'm, yeah. this is above my pay grade. I can't handle <laughs> oh, this heat. <laughs> this drone almost melted in the air. Like, it it literally did come back down. AI is already it had, rebelling. It had the warning on it and everything. It said, you know, heat yeah. warning or your know, heat failure or whatever, and it just oh, wow. shut down. It was done. Wow. And that and, had and to David be hot. And I are out in the middle of this field thinking, like, well, we're out here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my warning that I get to flash? <laughs> yeah. I, I, you saying your camera guy was in all black. Had I not been in front of the camera, if I was him, I'd have been in like a Speedo with an umbrella hat or something just to try to <laughs> cool off. That, Lawrence of Arabia or something like yeah. those. Yeah. Yeah. White yeah. robes and yeah, big head flowy pieces. stuff. Yeah. yeah. It, well, y'all seem to handle it well because in yeah. watching the videos, I didn't see y'all walking and complaining the whole time. <laughs> like, had it been me and Matt, we had we'd a great com- editor. We had a great editor. <laughs> 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 he cut all that out of there for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's all Matt and I would have been doing. You wouldn't have had any footage left. We'd be trying to present. Go, God, it's hot. Good <laughs> Lord. I so, live um, in Texas. This is hot. I'm guessing you got you guys went out there with a good bit of knowledge already of what you were going to look for. Did you did you learn anything new when you got there that you're like, oh crap, we didn't plan to to investigate this, but I really want to check this out too. Hmm. We did get a by chance we got one of our best interviews of the entire film. Uh, we didn't we didn't plan on that. We were checking into the Airbnb and the guy checking us in. The guy that told me you can't put the air conditioner lower than 86 degrees. <laughs> He's like, what What are you guys doing here anyway? I think he was thought we were shooting some scandalous film. Uh, but we anyway, were like, oh, uh, we're just from Skinamax. Yeah, 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 we're just a <laughs> little movie. Don't worry. About <laughs> but anyway, we told him what it was about. He's like, I, I've got a witness for you. I, I, let me call my friend. And it turned out it was the best wit- one of the best witnesses in the movie and one of the few Bigfoot witnesses we actually got to talk to. So. Oh, wow. Oh, that's that, awesome. that was pretty Randomly. excited and unplanned. Randomly. Yeah, it was very yeah, random. Yeah. And um, I, I think, you know, just talking to some of the folks out there who know what they're talking about, the um, uh, the botanist Jim Dice, you know, was telling us about how you can eat stuff in the desert. There's a lot to eat if you know what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. That, you know, that, that helped us um, kind of reconsider the notion that a Sasquatch could live in a desert. And then going, just driving from the the desert, the flatland, up into the mountains there, because there is a, a really good change of elevation, mm-hmm. and you can definitely feel the difference in the climate. Um, it's it's very. Uh, let me put it this way: it it made us realize that if you were out there living as a creature, you could go to the different spots depending on what time of year it was. And it would be more hospitable in this other spot and still have food and all that stuff. So, you know, there's stuff that we found out that we didn't consider going out there beforehand for sure. Yeah. yeah. You make a good point because I know a lot of people would probably think it's a desert. You're talking about how hot it is. How could a Sasquatch live in that area? We think of them in the Pacific Northwest in the forest or, you know, in the swamps in Florida and Texas and stuff. But like you said, there, if you know what you're doing, if you've grown up around there or as an animal, they can, there's a lot of larger animals that survive in deserts. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that a bipedal hominid could find enough food out there to survive. And you know, like you said, the the change of elevation, you can go maybe higher elevations during the day and come down into the low at night. And maybe they move around more at night when the sun's not out like a lot of African animals do. You'll middle of the day, they'll be napping under a tree mm-hmm. instead of mm-hmm. running around. So it's not out of the realm of possibility for a Sasquatch to be out there. And y'all may not know, but Bigfoot and dog man are like my obsessions, like ghost. Awesome. But cryptids, that's my thing. And any bipedal hominid, that's, 
that that, that that's my passion. So it it's cool that that area has Bigfoot. Yeah, his, something else I mean, to you're gonna draw love, me there. You're gonna love this, uh, Adam. It when we looked at all these uh, sightings, you know, these witness accounts, and checked the dates. Mm -hmm. The wintertime hits were all down in the valley in the desert area. And the summertime hits were all up in the higher elevation, mm. yeah. uh, a place up there called Warner Springs. It's, it's, it's covered in oak trees, very green, a lot of water up there. Well, a lot of water for Southern California anyway. Yeah. So, you know, they, they correlated for sure. And it certainly, you know, pointed to the fact that this could be, you know, if something like that was living there, this could, how, could be how it survives. And that's, and we, that's awesome when you get a pattern like that, because it shows it's not, it, it could be a legit creature because it's following a migration pattern or whatever uh -huh. you want to call it. That's, it, that's great evidence to me that there is something that people are seeing. It's not all imagination. Yeah. And, and on top of that, um, this is a different looking creature too. It's a uh, skinnier, it's scrawny, and it's got a light color coat, like a sandy brown blondish. color coat, yeah. blondish even, so that, you know, it's better suited for a desert environment, I would say. Yeah. We, we concentrated on the Sasquatch type stuff. We didn't come up with very many, um, if any, hits on dog men, but there was one dude who mentioned uh, a friend of his seeing a dog man at one point. I think he made it into the very for like the title sequence mm -hmm. uh, of the film. But um, yeah, we didn't get many other Dogman uh, sightings other than that one. Yeah, there, I haven't run across Dogman per se in many areas. It, it, it's not as widespread as Sasquatch is. And hey. If you want to look into Dogman, come here. You know, <laughs> yeah. 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 Southern, yeah, Southern Georgia. Yeah. Southern Kentucky. You know Tennessee. You know the that's where that's where you're going to hear people have those stories of Grandpa was out hunting and saw a dog man. I mean, you know, yeah. I've 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 heard of Michigan's them for another years. one. Yeah, Wisconsin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lately, yeah. I've been getting a lot from Kansas. Believe really? it or not, really? a lot of dog man yeah. cases out of Kansas. Yeah, hmm. poor dog man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they must be bored. Yep. <laughs> The so, getting uh, flea collars are getting expensive, you know. <laughs> <laughs> do y'all think with uh, with all the reports and everything out there? Do you think there are natural explanations, like natural phenomena that's happening out there that would explain it, or do you think, like, what do you think is higher possibility out there? Do you think there's more paranormal stuff or more unexplained? natural phenomena that gets reported as paranormal. Hmm. I think it's That's, a mixture of both, honestly. Yeah, it's a good question because it, it could go e either way, I think. Um, like There's so a lot many of the, different types of activity out there that it's really hard to you know, Yeah, it, it you kind of got to hone box. in on, on each one that you're talking about to, to you know, to answer that, but uh, I know a lot of the old West ghost stories seem to be more legends than mm -hmm. you know anything else. But um, as as far as the encounters, like the the witnesses that we talked to, you know, very credible, nice people. They were, um, you could tell they were kind of nervous. They didn't want to really bring it up, talk about it, which you know to me points towards that. At least if it didn't happen, they believe it happened. You know, yep, exactly. Um, and so there, yeah, I think you kind of have to hone in on each individual thing. Cause you know, like we said, with the bases out there for the military, some of that could be uh military craft that people don't know, you know, what it is or how to identify it, but there's plenty out there that, uh, could be the exact opposite. You know, even the military doesn't know what, what's going on. So yeah, it's, it's a case by case basis and it, it's a coin flip for me. I don't know about you, Derek. Pretty, you know, pretty much the same way. I mean, just take the uh, the UFOs, for example. Maybe they are military, maybe they're not, but a lot of these accounts also have the military chasing these items, mm. whatever they are, mm -hmm. uh, with helicopters, with jets, that kind of thing. So even when you think you know, you're not so sure. You're like, well, you know, if they're chasing it, is this really theirs or are they working in cahoots? What's going on here? And we tried to throw in a little bit of um, kind of a scientific um, approach to some of the things that had been said and that we were seeing and things. And, 
you know, it, it's it's fun to experiment. Like we experimented with the quartz and talked about <laughs> talked to a geologist about um, dust devils and could things be set on fire and kick up in in these fireballs and then burn out. And that's what people think they're seeing with orbs and you know, just little just trying to spitball and think of things and. Even that is not a great uh, explanation for a lot of these stories. A lot of boxes are left unchecked. You know? I, that's what you I know. told Adam. That that one that and, you know, I mean, I realize you're just you're just spitballing, but I said you know, I, it, the probability of that happening seems you know it's less probable than just saying it's a UFO. I mean, yeah. because it just seemed like. There's so many moving parts would have to, you know, work together to make something like that happen. I mean, yeah, sure. You know, theoretically you, you can talk about it, but it's just kind of like, man, that's a one in a million shot, man. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you, I think yeah, that was you, sort of point. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, not to say that it, it's not completely impossible, but again, like it's a lot of space and not a lot of people out there. So who knows if it's happened naturally when nobody's seeing it too, you right. know, that's another thing to consider with that. But th- like, I think you hit it right on is there's too many moving parts for stuff like that. When you start having to explain things with, well, this happens and this happens and then there's have to be like cold iron and this and that, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, even you know me as as uh, a more on the skeptical side, I'm I'm like, well, I'd rather go with Occam's razor than <laughs> yeah. thinking of all. My, my, it works both ways, right? Ama- yeah. Amanda said it best. You know, we're watching this, and she goes, "It's an owl with a cigarette lighter." It found, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, and it's great. We've talked about that before on other things when you try to. Like we'll look into what is the skeptical explanation for this and what is the, you know, quote unquote believer explanation for this. And a lot of times for me, when you get somebody who is skeptical of the phenomena, they seem to start stretching it a little bit and you're like, okay, yeah, you're going for low hanging fruit, but this fruit is actually kind of like rotting on the ground because it it's <laughs> it's a crab apple. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it, it's so <laughs> improbable that whatever you're explaining would happen, I don't think it would happen as often as the sightings are happening. Mm, you know, yeah. and the the quartz flaming dust devil thing, I, I think the way it would move, and this is just, you know, an idiot southerners guide to thermodynamics but i think the the way it would move would not match the stories that y'all have heard of how the balls of light behave you know i think it would follow yeah. that updraft or the dust devil and it would go up and then kind of fall back down or burn out it wouldn't move up and down and right and left and forward and backward like the balls of light are claimed to move mm-hmm. or shoot across the road yep. as they're they're claimed to have done or from mountaintop yep. to mountaintop we've heard that a few times so yep and, and i and part of the reason we had that whole section in there is we we wanted to show that you know we wanted we were invested in this stuff enough to actually try to put a some kind of experimentation together sure. to follow you know that down the rabbit hole and just show hey here's a way to think about uh, this as well. Let's see if it can happen. And if it can't, you know, let's think about all the things that, that can or can't, you know, go wrong with this. And, and then just show that at least it's not like, Hey, ghosts, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Y'all even got to do your own experiment, you know, with, with the quartz. And I was like, Dang! Look at this. Look at the size of those chunks, and the way y'all talked about it, it was just like everywhere you went, it was like there's more quartz. Yeah. It just it's like laying oh, it's out. It's just everywhere. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, it's just everywhere. It's a lot yeah, of feldspar and stuff. I think we grabbed like uh, some feldspar or, or quartzite or something like that. But yeah, I mean, it still sparked. Like we were both like, wait a minute, re- is this really doing this? Yeah. Like, <laughs> we thought we, we were, were just going to try it. Yeah. 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 So that makes me wonder. Since there's so much quartz around there, we we know it's used in, you know, 
electronic devices to conduct electricity and store. I mean, I, I've heard elsewhere that it can actually store information electronically for like computer chips and everything. So mm-hmm. do you think the amount of quartz out there is is related in any way to the amount of activity? Like you hear in a lot of paranormal stuff that sandstone holds, you know, the stone tape theory, it has a memory and it can hold uh, memories of dramatic events in the past. Do you think the amount of quartz out there could either be causing the paranormal activity or drawing like the UFOs and the high strangeness to that area? Well, for me, there certainly seem to be some sort of correlation, especially with the ghost lights that are reported mm-hmm. out there. Um, I, we couldn't figure out why. I mean, that that tor- that quartz tornado was about the best theory that we could come up with. But for me, it just seemed like there was too much quartz on the ground. There's too much uh, piezoelectric uh, possibilities mm-hmm. for you know that type of rock. So for for me, I felt like there was some sort of connection, and I like the idea that maybe these UFOs are attracted to these quartz deposits that are out there. And it's not just quartz. There's gypsum mines. There's, mm-hmm. uh, I think there's gold out there. There's all sorts of minerals and, and stuff. I mean, it's a desert. There's a lot of useful stuff, but it's also a state park where it's protected. So, right. um, you know, maybe you know, it, it's quite possible. Yeah, I'd see it's, and this has come up in the past, I don't know, four or five years too, how people are kind of correlating uh, quartz with strange places and events. And uh, I mean, right up the road from y'all in Somerset is uh, a lot of quartz happening there. And I know, um, what's his name? Nathan Paul Isaac was uh, doing his Penny Royal podcast uh, around that area and talking about all the weird stuff happening in Somerset and stuff. And um, it definitely, you know, it, it does that say that uh, paranormal stuff happens because there's quartz or there's just a lot of quartz in a lot of places and, you know, every now and then you're going to get a lot of, you know, coincidences like that. I don't know, yeah. but there, there's certainly a lot of quartz out in, uh, the park there in Anza Borrego. So it's, um, <laughs> I guess it's a, a, a stone in the, the jar for that one or something. I don't know. Yeah. And like you <laughs> that, said, that it old could, chestnut. you know, that one too, <laughs> Eric, you, you like all the, the sayings. <laughs> I grew up with these. This is Kentucky things. <laughs> these Tennessee boys don't know this. <laughs> uh, like you said, it could be that we're just putting, there's so much activity happening all over the place, and we're just saying, oh, it, it's happening here because of the quartz, and we're making a correlation that really isn't there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, could be. I think there, there was a, a website where, this guy draws correlations from random things. You just put two things in and he'll give you the correlation or whatever. And maybe that's what we're doing is we're, (laughs) you know, paranormal activity. Oh, I see quartz. They must be related somehow when it could just as easily happen without the quartz there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like guys, we've talked about, you know, UFOs, you know, out there, we've talked about, um, you know, cryptids and everything. One thing we haven't mentioned is there's a lot of good old fashioned ghost stories out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, some, there is. some of those, some of those legends that you guys cover, man, they, those are fantastic stories. You know, they really are. whether, whether there's, you know, actual witnesses or they're just, you know, stories from the desert that uh, people out there have grown up with. They're fantastic. And, you know, a lot of times you just don't hear, you know, new stories like that, new legends that just don't sound like rehashes of something that happened in another state or mm-hmm. four or five other states. You know, it's like, oh, well, they've just, you know, they, they these were coal miners. These were cowboys. These were, you know, some, you know, whatever. Um but you know th- those stories I thought were fantastic. I mean, I really did. Did did you guys did you guys get anywhere as far as picking up on you know ghostly activity? I knew knew you were out there with a with an EMF reader and everything. Did did anything kind of make you feel like yeah something out here is haunted? I don't know that I ever got that sense. Um, I was more. 
I, I was more freaked out by the UFO stuff, to be honest <laughs> with you, and, and the military stuff. Um, the the ghost stuff, it's really hard when it's 115 degrees to like mm. feel ghostly activity or whatever. <laughs> I mean, everything feels everything Swipe feels so weird at 115 in. degrees, but you might uh, notice a I cold mean, we, spot quicker. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 you get that shiver up. <laughs> oh! There it was. There you go. Yeah. Please, more ghosts, please. <laughs> yeah, please. Right. Just Come keep here, this on a loop. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep going. But there's a ton of history in this area. The Butterfield stage line went from Yuma, Arizona to San Diego. It was the first route to Southern California. And that thing's been there for 300 years or something. Um, I'm going to get this guy's name wrong. Uh, Juan Batista De Anza. Did I get it? Yeah. Um, he, he came up through there in the early 1700s, I think, with a bunch of missionaries. So there was, you know, there's uh, influence from that, plus all the Native American cultures that have been out there for who knows how long, thousands of years. So there's yeah. tons and tons of history out there. And that really plays into a lot of those ghostly legends that are hanging out in that area. I mean, I mean, almost all of them, because you had that stage line running through all the the watering holes, the mm-hmm. springs and stuff. You know, they're following that, and the the valleys. And um, um, Kit Carson took over for the army. You know, in the eighteen hundreds, late eighteen hundreds, and um, had that little sod hut that we show in there that is still standing today. Uh, it's easy to preserve stuff out there because it's just dry and hot and nothing happens. Mm. Um, and nobody <laughs> wants to go out there. So, yeah. <laughs> um, it's like so, yeah. Bake oven. It's just all <laughs> sudden. <forget it. laughs> yeah. America's easy bake oven. That's what we should call it. Um, but it's all it's all from that time period, like the 19th century. And there was stuff that, you know, we, we investigated that uh, didn't make it into the film. For example, we went to Julian, California, which was a um, – uh, a little mining town uh, out there, and right, Derek, they they mined in Julian, right? Yeah, yeah. The had, town had was founded mines. on gold miners up in that area. Um, at one time, it was it was either just a little bit bigger or almost as big as San Diego, and was almost the county seat or something like that. And then, mm. uh, and then everything dried up, and and everybody left uh, and moved to San Diego. So, uh, Julian was was or is famous for some ghost activity. And there's a, a hotel there that's said to have a haunted room. Um, and of course we couldn't get into it. Uh, when we were there, we, we asked them and then they got squirrely about us shooting in there. Mm. And, um, well, they said yes. And then they said no, once we got inside. So it was, was one, another of the, one of these. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Geez. Yeah. So, Perfect you know, example. we, we wanted to investigate that, uh, but, but couldn't. Um, but, there are several spots and the, the more goes and then um, up by uh, Warner Springs that was in Dead Man Hole. It was named because bodies kept showing up at this watering hole, just laying there dead. And the weirdest thing about it was that nothing was taken off of them. So it's oh, not bandits, yeah. you know, it's not renegados or whatever's running around there. It's it's they all had <laughs> money and guns and watches still on the bodies. So the, the yeah. stories go so. It's a lot of history. Weird. That's weird because yeah. you've made it to a watering hole. And I know y'all covered in there what can happen if you're too dehydrated and you drink too quickly. And so that could be an explanation for some of them, but you wouldn't think all of those bodies would fall victim to that because I'm sure they knew, you know, you had to Presumably. had to have known yeah. Yeah. even then. Well, they- don't drink this much water when you're that dehydrated or it'll kill you, even if they don't know why. So it's weird that that many bodies would show up with nothing missing and all be in that they same were also, area. They were also hit over the head or strangled most of these bodies too. Oh, so yeah. the, the, you know, the cause of death was pretty obvious, I think for a lot of these. Okay. That's so bizarre. yeah, that, that, that is mm-hmm. bizarre. Cause, and that, I think y'all touched on it too. That, that could be Sasquatch activity or, you know, quote unquote monster activity there. Because if it was humans, they would have taken money, jewels, pocket watch, boots, something mm-hmm. off of these people. But if it's a monster or a creature, a large creature defending its territory, it has no use for, you know, size right. 10 and a half boots. What's it going to do? <laughs> So yeah, yeah, never know, man. I mean, you know, they they're out there putting boot prints in there, going, 
God dang it, they keep following my regular footprint. We're going to make them follow me. <laughs> See, Bigfoot with a with a cross necklace on. You know, he's got a styling. Yeah. It's, pocket watch. <laughs> and I, I said, too. Where is hat on? Yeah. yeah where's the yeah. other end of that pocket watch going, Bigfoot? <laughs> <laughs> but the, you don't want to know. There, yeah. There's a real Scooby-Doo element to some of these stories, though. I mean, you know, some of them, they, yeah. they, they had to protect their claim. So they had to come up with something to keep people away. And I think some of, some of those, those, those crazier ghost stories, you know, they, they go back to that where the guys like, and, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, they're, they're going to put something up. They're going to make something happen that that's visual, put, you know, dress up in a sheet or whatever. You know, just so there's a witness to go back and go, you don't want to go out here. You know, there's something out there, leave it alone. And that, that leaves that guy to, you know, do what he wants to on his land or, or, you know, find the gold and, and not have to worry about anybody coming in. It reminds me of uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, when they were going in Sherwood Forest and there was all the, <laughs> the wind chimes. They were like, oh, no, yeah, don't yeah. go in there. It's haunted. Right. There's yeah. ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. It, I mean, you know, yeah. if you want to keep somebody out, you know, it's, for, you know, oh, it's already way hot. You know, there's no water. Yeah. If there's ghosts, I'm out. You know, I'm done. I'm not going. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's strike That's three. the final straw, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and we know that happens because it, uh, we've heard stories of that happening in hollers and Appalachians. Oh yeah. Stuff like that. You get mm-hmm. the families that make up these legends of, you know, my ancestors ran into this red eyed something or other. Mm-hmm. And you get some weird Yankee coming down into their holler. They'll start hooting and hollering behind a tree and rattling something to scare them. You're so, getting too close to the still. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so it could be a, a gold miners version of that. Yeah. So, but mm-hmm. they, they were some really cool, uh, ghost stories and legends there that in they're they're unique. They seem to be unique to that area because yeah. the, not to spoil too much, but the flaming skeleton that I don't yeah. think I've heard anything yeah. like it anywhere else. And it seems to fit that area so mm-hmm. well, like you can imagine you being out there and yeah, I, I can imagine that coming in front of me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we did a premiere for the film back in August, uh, up in Idlewild, which is, essentially the northern point of the triangle and we actually had an eight foot skeleton with a lantern in his chest standing that everybody could take their picture with and uh, he was uh, the hit of the party there for sure yeah that's cool (laughs) yeah that is great that's cool (laughs) um well i mean to kind of close it out here fellas um why don't you like we'll let you tell when people can expect to be able to watch it and where and how they can follow y'all to keep up on news of the film and all that. Sure. Sure. Well, it, it releases March 5th and you can rent it or you can buy it on that date. Uh, Apple, I, uh, what is it? Uh, Apple, Apple TV. TV. Yeah. Thank you. Apple TV and Amazon prime. And then there's a whole slew of other places. It's going to be available as well, but those are the, the best options. And if you want to look for more information, go to bregotriangle.com. That's B O R R E G O triangle.com. This we're not standing next to this if it shows up, but that's a, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. at the, that's at the cool. premiere. And that, you know, we, we came up to about that's it's armpit. It's not really focusing for you, but, um, we, we stood at about its armpit there to, for the height of it. Just, and Derek made a, made this lantern in the chest and everything. And, uh, that would be yeah, cool. It was a lot of fun. That's really cool. Yeah. That would, that yeah, would make yes. a great photo op out there. Yeah. It was a good time. Well, fellas, thank you so much for coming on and discussing it with us. And, uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what everybody that watches it thinks. Cause oh, me wanna, too. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sure y'all are, I have nothing to do with it, but I'm just excited to hear what everybody's 
opinions are of it. Cause I know there's going to be people from that area or who have been there, lived there, whatever that see it. And some will probably message y'all and go, yeah, yeah, I've experienced this. And I, I just can't wait to see what people are talking We're about, hoping. about it. We're yeah. hoping that's yeah. going to happen for sure. Yeah. yeah. So if you're listening to this episode and you go watch the film and you've had something, contact David or Derek and let them know. Yeah, please. That'd be oh. great. Thank you, fellas. We need, mat- we need material for the sequel. So. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Thank you guys for having us. Oh, yeah. Really yeah. Appreciate the that. time. Thank it, you. It's been great to meet you both. Uh, I've listened to your shows for years. And so to, to finally be able to, to have a conversation with you, it's great. Likewise, too. likewise. And we'll been have on my radar it. for years and Adam's been hiding you from me. So. Uh, you know. yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I've that. never been the social media guy, you know. <laughs> there you He's go. been protecting you, Derek, from all the stuff that follows so, Matt around. That's, exactly right. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I was going to say it. It's Keep him far away mind. from everybody else. We don't need attachments. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So thank you again to Derek and David for coming on the show. and. You know, it's been a while since we got to talk with Derek, so it was good catching up with Derek and talking about his new project. And it was great finally getting to meet David, Mm -hmm. because like Matt said in the beginning, we've listened to them both for a long time, just hadn't been able to connect with David until now. So that was great. Um, And it was great to have them on the show. Yeah. So thank you to both of them and thank all of you for listening. Um, Remember. Uh, and as Adam said at the end of our, uh, our chat with David and Derek, when you guys have the opportunity to, to see shadows in the desert, jump in there and give us your opinion, you know, give us your opinion about what's going on. What do you think? Maybe, uh, you've lived in that area. You've been out there. You're familiar with it. Uh, maybe you've got an experience you'd like to share. Best place to do that is in our Facebook group. Um, thousands of people every day they're they're you know the posts just everything from dad jokes to how do i get rid of this spirit that has taken up residence in my house mm-hmm. um so check that out don't forget to check out our website which is graveyardpodcast.com there you can find links to purchase graveyard tales merchandise you can listen to the show and you can become a patron and that is where you're going to find our brand new show uh, for the $10 patrons. You sign up, you're going to get access to an entirely new podcast. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's totally different than anything Adam and I have done before. Uh, so we think you're going to enjoy it. So thanks again to Derek Hayes and David Flora. And until next time, we'll save you a seat in the great. See you soon.